Cool. All right. So, as you know, I'm Bonanza, and I am joined by my friend. How, how do you want me to refer to you? Oh, just a uh, friend from Fort Myers, Florida man. Florida man. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I mean, yeah. Okay, so what we'll do is uh, we'll come out of uh, Phoenix Deer Valley. Perfect. Uh, and just uh, spawn on the ramp. Um, I I'm going to be on the south ramp, so... And Cessna there, 1. Should there be any, like, menus for me, or is it just going to kick into it? We'll spawn, like, on top of each other and find one... One after another? How does that work? Um, well, it depends on where you're spawning. Are you spawning on a runway? Are you spawning on a parking stand? I don't know. I can't see any of the stuff you're seeing right now. It says we're in a group. Okay. You need to go to world map and then fly? Yeah, you, yeah, you, you got to go through world map. You have to go do all that stuff. So it's uh, you're not... Uh, what's the call letters for our report? I, 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 give me a second. I'm actually switching it to uh, live players. And uh, it's uh, Kilo Delta Victor Tango. Got it. Phoenix Deer Valley. You're spawning off of what airport? Uh, or what runway? I'm not spawning on the runway. I'm sp sp uh, spawning on the parking. Uh, uh, so um, I'm on ramp 13. If you go to the top selection, you go just. To 14. Yeah, go to 14. To the side of me. Yeah, cool. All right. Uh, Cessna 172s? Yep. Flight conditions? Should we go to live flight conditions? Yep, live flight conditions. Make sure you're on, li uh, everything is live. Uh, so click the multiplayer and then hit the live button. Under, under flight conditions, you'll see on the top it says multiplayer, and then do live multiplayer. I do not see that. Online. I see the group. I see this. I see notifications. Under flight conditions. Yeah, under flight conditions. I, I've got nothing under there. Under flight conditions? Yeah. Oh. Oh, I think it's because I'm the group leader, so you can't modify your flight conditions. Oh, perfect. Okay, so we'll just fly out of there? Yeah, so, because uh, I... Yeah, so just just fly sl into Deer Valley. I completely forgot. As soon as you, if you're not the group leader, you can't actually change the flight conditions for people. Um, Alright, so I will hit the fly button. Yeah. Here we go. And then the long way for the big load. Yeah. See, uh, I because I fly in this area a lot, I actually have it locally cached. Oh, nice. Yeah, I've tried locally caching Page, and, um, you know, basically Fort Myers doesn't render in all that well. The bridges aren't there. Um, but, like, every time I fly out of Page, like, it gets a little better and better. So I guess I just need, like, how do you force it to cache? Uh, so what you do is it's under your settings, uh, and, and you got to go under data and then scroll all the way down, you'll see manual cache. And then, and then you have to define a manual cache on your disk. Okay, cool. Yeah. So I'll just, so I should, I need to, I've got a couple of times I like to fly in, in and around. Yeah. Is there an option, like if I were just to go get a shitload of hard drives, is there an option for me just to like load the world? Uh... Ooh, I don't know. Two petabytes. Yeah, two petabytes. But I mean, you can't put two petabytes in a single in a single computer unless you're dealing with server capacity. You know, that's that's yeah, that's yeah. some. Well, yeah, you would have to have a NAS in order to do that. Now, then the next question comes in: If there is a NAS, like, could you put together a local NAS with like, you know, twelve simulators and all have them pulling from that same data? You would have to ask Microsoft. You, you you would have to ask Microsoft about that. It's like that'd be kind of a cool thing to have for like hardcore simmers, is to localize like, you know, these large networks in regions where you've got like a good group of like twelve simmers, and then have pay like pay you monthly to then have fast access to the world. 
Well, no, the, 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 do you know the frequency of the Azure data centers? No clue. Okay, they're, they're, they, um, they have more, Azure has more data centers than Google. Really? Yes. What do they start, what do they start doing, like stocks or something? What, why do they have so many data centers? Because they, they want to specialize in localized caching and, uh, and, and localized content distribution. So the content distribution servers are actually... Um, and the CDNs uh, is are really good on Microsoft side, uh, better than Google in some cases. So, That's pretty cool. Uh, so yeah. Look at that, Desert Valley. Cool. All right, there I am. Where are you? All right, you should be spawning in here very shortly. Hopefully, you'll be on my left. I say hopefully because sometimes this doesn't this 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 uh sometimes does and doesn't work. So I'm gonna hit the ready to fly button. Yeah. See what happens. Ah, oh, there you are. I see you. Oh, okay. So it just was a matter of me. All right. So hey, there you are. Wait, no, I don't see you. I'm on. I'm on your right. Uh, it's funny. So a yellow uh looks like a piper has spawned on top of you. Oh. It's taking up the same space. Hold on. How do I take a picture of that? Alt print screen? Uh, you can do uh, Alt uh, Windows print screen, and it, it uses the Xbox game bar as the uh, function. Uh, did you buy it through, uh, through the Microsoft Store or Steam? Steam. Okay. Then you also have option. You, you, if you also hit F12, it'll, um, it'll take a screenshot via Steam. Nice. All right. All right, uh, so I gotta turn my turn my boat on here. Uh, where is that dang switch? Master battery. Magneto on boat and start and. Did it turn over? Come on. Hold on, I gotta go back though. Uh, did you make sure that the fuel, your fuel, um, the fuel cutoff is turn is, um, is, is, make sure that's open? Oh yeah, where is that fuel cutoff? Uh, it's gonna be on the bottom next to, the, uh, next to the fuel selector. Should be a red, uh, should be a red switch. Oh yeah. The fuel tank is set to select right fuel tank or left fuel tank. Make sure it's center. Select center. Yep, it's center. And open fuel, fuel shutoff valve. Yep, yeah, click that. Click that. You want to open the fuel shutoff valve, then start, then start it. Uh, I don't deal. I don't deal with air traffic control, so don't, don't, don't deal don't with it. it. Yeah, don't worry about it. Okay. Uh, I turned over earlier without that shut off valve. There we go. Now you started it. Okay. Make sure your avionics are turned on, obviously. Oh, yeah, I turned all those on a second ago. All right, so I'm going to just hug your way. Okay. And I'll let you navigate us up to Flagstaff. All right. Um, let's see. Which way are you taxiing out? I'm going to taxi out right. All right. I will uh, be right behind you. There you are. It's so freaking cool. I was doing uh, some uh, bush flying up in uh, uh, Idaho a little bit earlier, going in and out of these uh, fields. And it was interesting having to contend with the mountains and whatnot. Have you done any of the bush flying, uh, like, 
things in the in the game, like the Breckenridge flight or any of that stuff? No. Oh my god, dude, it is so much fun. Freaking beautiful. I mean, of course it's beautiful. It's all of their like preferred, you know, places. Right. Just incredible and a lot of fun. You know, you'd like spend like twenty minutes flying. And yeah. you go up this beautiful canyon. Just just amazing. Uh, it's also fun because it like forces you to kind of like navigate, you know, using the using the um, headings and distance and time. Yeah. And um, that's fun. You know. Yeah, because you did all that tutorials for navigating without having to use a GPS or anything, right? Yeah. Well, I did like yeah, exactly. I did the whole I did the whole training, and then I started doing like the bush flights and the landing challenges and all that stuff too. Yeah, well, it, I, I think it's I think it's fantastic that they actually teach you dead reckoning, um, you know, dead and dead all reckoning. yeah, and all that. Yeah, because a lot of people, um, especially with flight schools these days, they really like to. It's it we they they almost call us the magenta line generation. Because yeah. oh yeah, because we just follow a dot on the screen. Yeah, so freaking true. Yeah. I didn't even think about that. That's a terrifying prospect for the future, though. If you can't navigate by a map, then how on God's green earth are you going to be able to... Uh, are we doing a military takeoff? Uh, no, nah, we're... We'll, uh, well, I'll, I'll stick to the left-hand side of the runway. You can take the well, right. I will... Uh, I'm right on your wing, so let me know when you go full. Alright, I'm full. Okay. Uh, you, you have rudder pedals? I saw you had a yoke. I do. Oh, fantastic. I just have a stick. I need to, I, I need to get a, a yoke and, uh, and rudder pedals myself. I forgot my flaps. You don't need flaps. Just, just rotate yeah. it, just rotate it 60 knots. Oh god, this is a car in the way. And I'm up. Okay, just level it up, keep it nice and there, and then uh, uh, trim for 80 knots. See, what altitude are we heading to? Uh, we're going to be going up to 9,000. 10,000? Uh, yeah, 9. Um, so off to our left, uh, you'll see you'll, you see a building with a, you see a water tower? Uh, let me see. I do not. Is it uh, down low? Yeah, down low. Um, you see, you see a building with a water tower. Here, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll start a left-hand turn and start, start an orbit around it. Way low on the left. Yeah, low on the left. You see that? You see that? You see the building with the water tower. The it's a giant complex with the parking lot surrounding it. Huh? Here, I'll, I'll go. I'll I'll, I'll, I'll fly over it directly. Oh, hold on. My seat was a little too high. Yeah, I see it. Okay, that's Honeywell Aeronautical. That's that's where um that's where my boss actually uh, uh actually used to work. And uh, and that's where a lot of the stuff, like the um, uh, where the triple uh, seven flight deck was, uh, you know, designed and built, um, you know, for prototyping. And then, you know, they did the MD eleven out of there, um, seven one seven, you know, so any seven five seven. They they did all that out of um, out of that facility right there. So cool. Yeah. Um, and then now that we're coming around north, you still have me? Oh, hold on, let me look far. Uh, no, I don't have you anymore. Uh, let me get heading north. Uh, I, I'm passing. I'm passing over the Deer Valley Airport right now. I'm behind you because I'm not quite over the airport yet. Okay, but you see where I am, right? No, I don't see where you are. Um. Okay. So then what? What's your altitude? Uh, I'm at twenty-seven hundred. Right. I should be right next to you. Uh, so I'm, I'm heading dead north right now. Here, uh, do you I'm have, hey, actually, do you have labels turned on? 
No, how do I turn on labels? Okay, hit escape. Go okay. to general. Uh, general. Uh, go to traffic, and then show traffic nameplates, and make oh, cool. sure that's turned on. Yeah. Cool. All right. All right, and then unpause, and yeah. obviously unpause. Oh, there you are. I see you. Okay, so I'm way easier to find you. So what I'm gonna do now is. So interestingly enough, um, Wait, how fast are you going right now? Uh, I'm going around 90 knots. I thought you said we were holding at 80. Uh, well, I leveled off. Um, so I, I'm I'm over I'm orbiting around a group of buildings. So yeah, I see those down down below you. This the, that little uh, looks like a housing complex. So, yeah, so the housing complex is, uh, that I just flew over is where I live. Um, <laughs> and then the, um, and, and then uh, what I'm about to fly over is where I work. I, I work within a mile of where I live. The closer you are to your food, the happier your life is. Yeah, oh, and the, and the Walmart, I, I walk to my Walmart, which is in the shopping center right behind me. And I, I just walk and get groceries and come back. That's excellent. <laughs> Dude, this is a riot. All right, I'm going to turn north and start climbing. How high are we going? Uh, n uh, nine or thousand. All right, nine or it is. I'm going to try to sneak up right next to you. What's your speed? Uh, I'm going to be holding 90 knots, uh, but actually I'm going to probably go to... I'm probably going to go to 75 knots for the climb. Now, are you familiar with, with, with piston engines? As you climb, you have to lean the mixture to get the most power? Uh, no, I'm not. Okay. What you can do here. But, uh, so, we, so, so what, what you basically want to do is you want to pull the, you want to pull the mixture back just a little bit. And as you do, you'll see you'll get you gain some back some of that power that you that you lost. Yeah, I see. I'm starting to accelerate again. Look at that. Yep. So a, as we climb, as as you reduce as as you lose power, just make sure you um you you keep that in check. Now, what happens when we start leveling off, or we get to lower altitude? We need to start thickening up the. Fuel again. Yeah, we need we need to dip it in again. Um, I actually last night uh, when I ended. When I ended my flight, um, I um, I didn't put push the mixture back in. So when I was rolling off, I was pulling off the runway, but my engine stalled. Okay. <laughs> it's great that it happened in, in on the ground and not on the. And I, I was like, why the hell did oh, stick stick the mixture back in, just restart the airplane. <laughs> What altitude are you at now? Uh, I'm uh, 4,000. Uh, yeah, I'm just behind you. 3920. It's so weird that this aircraft doesn't give you the, um, it doesn't add two zeros. Like, it's just telling you your altitude just flat out. You know? Oh, yeah. No, so, so, uh, you, um, have you taken a look at my stream? Like, I, I, I would put, pull it on a separate device because I know you're running this from a laptop. Uh, just out of curiosity, how, how good is it from a laptop? It's coming from a guy who was playing this back, was playing Flight Sims back in like 1993. Um, this is incredible. I mean, I'm okay. sure for you, you'd be like, you know, oh, the graphics are a little, you know, junky or whatever. But for me, this is mind bendingly good. And, um, I'm just so blown away by by how well it runs and uh, how much detail there is. Now I've seen videos online of like, you know, detail being much higher on, you know, better machines and whatnot. But I'm still just just blown away by it. Yeah, so it's just very, very, very impressive. Now it's telling me in incorrect altimeter setting. Oh, uh, we we didn't actually set the our altimeter. Uh, here, let me gra let me grab the weather real quick. Um, Saying it's twenty nine point nine two inches. 
Yeah. What's I, it supposed to be? Uh, I guess we can turn on the radio and listen. Now, uh, or or option B, I can just look at. Uh, I, I have I have a it's two nine or eight eight. Two nine or eight eight. How do I adjust that on the rip? Um. So on the digital, you'll see uh, there should be a knob for barometric on the top right. It, oh, it's right. it's it's on it's on it's so on your screen you'll see um, obviously your glass cockpit you'll see a uh, you'll you'll see you'll um, I forget where it is in the G one thousand it's I, I'm thinking it's in the top left or top right. There it is. Decrease barometric pressure. It's kind of the middle, middle uh, right. Yeah. And it's twenty nine eight what? Eight. Twenty nine eight eight. Yeah. Got it. Cool. Now, have you ever done VOR to VOR navigation? VOR, which is that one again? Um, that's uh, it's it's a uh, it's basically yeah. it's basically a nav aid. Have you ever done? Uh, use radio navigation, like pop in frequency, and then um, and then and then like landed, but like landed on no, and then fly to it. Yeah, no, I've never done that. Okay, how do I do that? All right, so on on the so on the G one thousand, you'll you'll see you see a com, you have a, com, a set of com radios, and then you have a set of nav radios. Um, com transfer standby frequency, and then you should have a nav, you should have a, a equivalent one for nav. And on the other side? Yeah, pro check the other side. Yep, tuning standby box between NAV1 and NAV2. Okay, so... And then tune NAD receiver frequency, decrease or increase. So what I want you to do is I want you to tune the um, the Flagstaff VOR. Uh, it's going to be 113.85. Five, hold that. Three decimal five. Oh, too much. Three. Six five or eight five? Eight five. How do I go up by single inter increments? Um, what do you uh, what do you mean? It's only, the, the, it goes up by one one three, one one two, one one three. Uh, one, so one, so uh, you have a big knob and small knob. Make sure you're selecting the small knob. That just tunes between the two. Oh, got it. Increase audio level. No. 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 There, there's a so 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 the knob that you're using to manipulate uh, the the big number. Is actually the same one for the small number. It's there's two knobs on them, on, on that same knob. The little knob toggles between that one and that two. No, well, so so that's when you push it in. When you okay. put, but there's a so you have a you have a it's a, it's a two step oh, knob. Okay, hold on. I can also use the wheel on it, which is way easier. Yeah. I I, I I always scroll to handle my frequencies. That's so much easier. Four three. What was it? Uh, one one three decimal eight five. Eight five. Eh. Got it. Okay. All right. So and then put it as the active. All right, it looks like it's the active. Okay. Okay. So on your center, on your center, um, uh, does your HSI show yeah, a green? It's got a green. Yeah, I finally have a green dot on it. Okay. Oh, crap, uh, look at that. And then, and then, and then, if you adjust the course knob, you'll, you'll, you can select at which course you want to intercept that VOR at. What do you mean a course? So, th so there's a course knob on the left hand side, probably at the bottom left. Okay. Decrease selection altitude. Increase selection altitude. No, it, it it's it should you should see a knob that says CRS on it. Synchronize current heading. No. Yeah, I see CRS. Yeah, yeah, other side. Got it. Got it. Got it. Yeah. Okay. And just adjust the course knob. You can turn it, and you see the line in the center. It moves around. Okay. 
and that change. Oh no, that's barometric pressure. What was our barometric pressure? Eight two? Uh eight eight. But it's gonna it's probably gonna change a little bit here because we're gonna be going we're as we get closer to Sedona it's gonna be cooler and there's gonna be you know, we're halfway up the state, so obviously the weather is gonna be different. Why is it not letting me? Triangle one is CRS. Center C O D. Oh, there we go. Oh, it looks like we flew over it. Did we just fly over it? No. 13.85. Uh, Alright, what am I doing with this, with the uh, steering? So, oh, got it. So, so now you're manipulating the course knob? Yeah. Okay, so basically that's that's how um, you're when when we well, when I teach you some instrument approaches and whatnot later on that will become very handy. Which way do I want the screen arrow to point? Uh, you want it to be, you want it to point north. Okay, it is pointed north toward that blue to that kind of blue V thing. Yeah, well, that the blue thing is your is actually your heading select. So you have a course selection and a heading selection. And so when I, I tuned in with nav one, and I've got it selected, what what did that uh, give me? Uh, so that gave you a nav aid that you that that helps you figure out where your location is. Where did you go? Oh, there you are. I got, I got, uh, yeah, I got a thousand. Off the starboard right now. I have a thousand feet to go. Yeah, I'm at uh, eight thousand one seventy right now. So precise. Freaking sweet. So this is like all the stuff that like, this is why I like flying with you, because you're teaching me all the stuff that I would like never ever understand or even be able to come close to diving into this is fantastic oh yeah no it, it gets it gets even better when uh when when i teach you all the instrument stuff bush flying like energy management actually how to fly the plane like a lot of the times when i'm actually flying i'm not looking at my gauges at all and this even goes for real life i only use the gauges for reference i'm truly do, looking at the feel of how how things work versus a um uh, versus looking at at the instruments. Um, Are you though that understanding the instruments is half the fun of this? Oh yeah. I mean, I can fly. Oh. I mean, I, I oh, can yeah. land without anything like that. But having the knowledge to be able to guide you into an airport by just using a radio frequency, like that's cool. You know, trying to avoid becoming a magenta follower. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's slick. No, I see. But but here's the thing. Um, for your VFR, uh, so, so for your private pilot certificate, you do not require, uh, you are uh, not really required or really encouraged to, um, to look at the radio instruments or, or anything like that. And part of the reason is because, um, it's not part of, it's not really part of the certificate. Um, that's more of the instrument stuff. Now, the instrument stuff is good for navigation purposes, but... Uh, you see, the thing is with v VFR, it's in the name, Visual Flight Rules. So, it doesn't really matter too much what you're doing heads down inside the instruments. It's more important of what you're doing uh, looking outside. So, doing all your maneuvers like steep turns, like um, like figure eights, lazy eights, turning around a point. Um, so, it's all about the, all the physical stuff. airmanship that is, what, that is what is included in the private pilot certificate. Alright, we're at 9,000 feet. So I'm going to level it off and gain some speed. Now, do I need to thicken up my mixture to get a little faster? Or? No, no. As so, uh, so on a on a fixed speed prop, which is a Cessna 172, uh, you don't have a um, what, as you gain speed, the prop will go faster. So, but okay. what we're doing right now is we're we're just increasing the speed, and I'm trimming for speed. Have you ever heard of that concept, trimming for speed? boats all the time okay 
So, so like you get on plane and then you want to trim it down so you're not laboring over laboring the motor. Uh, well, no, it, it in this concept is it's the elevator because um, so trim is prime. So if I want to trim for 80 knots, I set my speed. I then trim the air. Uh, I then trim the aircraft, and then if I let go of the controls, the aircraft will fly at 80 knots. And then based on my power settings, I will either increase or decrease altitude. So I'm never fighting the airplane to uh, to do any of my speed adjustments, any of that stuff. Similar. Yeah. Like, and that's what you do. You trim for your, you know, your speed. Like, if you right. want to go, you know, 20 miles an hour, then you, you know, basically get the boat up to 20 miles an hour and then trim it in so you're not burdened. You don't have to keep the the throttle cranking. You can even then pull back the throttle to keep once you get it on. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, so the on the center strip toward toward the middle or the bottom, you'll you'll see a button that says AP. Do you do you see that button? Zoom in. Whoop. Go away. Uh, I've got come mic, come mic, come mic. Tell PA speaker mute high sense DME. ADF, aux, nav, main speak, pilot, co-pilot. I do not see anything that says AP. Oh, I do on the other console. Yeah. Oh, it's on. It's on the. It's on the right screen. My bad. Yeah. Okay. okay. So click. Click the autopilot button. Okay. Uh, so that's going to pop it into roll and vertical speed mode, and basically okay. it's just going to hold. It's just going to hold us right here for a second. Uh, I want to teach you another concept of leading, leaning the uh, the mixture so that way you get the most fuel efficiency for longer duration trips. Okay. So, so what we're going to do is, uh, so we're we're nice and level, probably 105 knots. We're actually at maneuvering speed. So on on your RPM on the right hand display, bring it to around uh, 2400 RPM. Okay, hold on. Let me see what I can do here. 2400 RPM. I'm at 25. Let's bring it down to 80. So bring bring it. So bring bring down the. Uh, so pull your power back. 85. Pull pull your power back a little bit. Yeah, just pull it back. I'm at, I'm at 2370. That should be good, right? Uh, I I want tw yeah tw yeah that that that's that's good enough. So then wait. 2410. Yeah. Yeah. Four, yeah that that that'll work. So now. Okay. Um, what you're going to do is you're going to pull back the mixture just until you start really seeing a power drop, right? So right now my mixture is at like 28%. All right, my mixture, I brought it down to nothing. I brought it down to 10 and I've, I've reduced some speed. Okay, uh, push, push it back in. Okay. Uh, push back in until you get back up to your original number. Once you get back up to your original number, you should be good. So what we're doing is we are, um, my fuel flow as it stands is around eight gallons per hour. How do you see that? Um, so fuel flow for me is on the left. For you is probably on the right hand side uh, under your RPM. Yep, fuel flow. I'm at somewhere between 20... So yeah, I'm at about ten okay. uh, gallons per hour. Okay, that, that's good. So what I did was I, I gave. So what we're what I just taught you is something called lean and peak. So the cylinder. So you have a uh, you have a, you're you're probably looking. You have an exhaust gas temperature and also uh, in other planes you have a cylinder head temperature. And uh, what we're trying to do is we're trying to go lean of peak efficiency on the uh, for the for the burning. Now the other thing too is that this is a default aircraft. Um, there, when we when uh, A two A comes out with their um, with with their add-ons, oh geez, um, I am getting crap frames right now. Some turbulence happening right now. Yeah, I, I just had I just had a big stutter. Um, anyways, uh, so. Oh, I think we're in visual range of each other again. Uh, look off to your um, to your port side or to your uh, left. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> 
Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna come left. So, um, but anyways, uh, as I was saying, the, um, well, oh. uh, let me switch to nav mode. There we go. Um, so as I was saying, the, um, we, we want to be lean a peak, uh, from an efficiency standpoint, it gives us the most fuel, um, but also, it, it, it makes sure that we don't run the engine too hot. Uh, and with, right, with, with actual add-ons, like, uh, like there's an add-on by A2A for 172 for other platforms, um, they are very accurate in that when you, um, the audio profile will change differently when, when, you, when you are lean to pink. Uh, but the other thing too, and this is what you don't get with the simulator, um, is that you can feel the aircraft when it's lean to peak. When you when you when you have it purring like a kitten, when you know it's all it's all by feel, and that's what a lot of this flying is. And you really can't get that with with the sim. Not um, not unless you've got some some crazy going on. Think about that though. I mean, you like, can get you can get some butt kickers and whatnot, and you know people. People do get those, but the thing is, is that it's truly not going to replace, you know, the feeling of the G-forces, you know, actually feeling what the airplane is doing. Tyler, what I'm looking at with this simulator and what I was playing just 18 years ago is so remarkably realistic. In another 20 years, we're going to be sitting here looking at this just going like, it'll be... It could be indistinguishable. It's going to be amazing. I, I you know, I, I'm blown away by this realism. This is just, it's overwhelming. It truly is fantastic. It, there's little screws on, on the side of this aircraft holding the upholstery in. Like, the level of detail in this is mind-bending. Oh, I, I can't wait for you to see the uh, the the add-ons when they come out. <laughs> Markings and placards installed on this airplane contain operating limitations, which must be complied with when operating this airplane in the normal category. Other operating limitations must be complied with when operating the airplane in this category or in the utility category are contained in the pilot's operating handbook and FAA-approved airplane flight manual. It's just amazing. So like that's that's on a plaque that's just over your left shoulder. And you can read it. It's right there. Just incredible. Um what's our altitude supposed to be at? What's our barometric pressure supposed to be at? Uh let me uh let me get Sedona weather right now. Uh oh yeah yeah, I wanted to do that too. Hold on, let me see if I can remember how to do that. Where's the damn radio on this thing? Uh, we are... Uh, altimeter is 3012. 3012? Yep. Do so you think you'll get your, uh, your license? I'm, I'm really thinking about it. It's, uh, I haven't given it this much serious thought since I was like, you know, in high school. There you are. I see you out there in the distance. You must be looking out over something really amazing. What is that you're flying over? Uh, well, I'm, I'm coming up to, um, Montezuma. Oh, well, we're both coming up to Montezuma, Montezuma right now. I'm turning into you real quick. I'm gonna try to get over your wing. Uh, if you reduce your speed by just a touch, I'm at 90 knots right now. Okay. And I'll try to meet you over here where this uh, where this mountain kind of drops into that valley, where I'm kind of aiming to meet up with you. 
to it. Yeah, I've been pushing out actually a few YouTube videos as well, so. This is just so freaking cool. There you are. See your little strobe on. I don't think I turned my strobe on. Need your strobes? Oh, I didn't turn on my strobes either. The lights are not synced, I guess. Turning on my strobes. Uh, what's really cool was when I was uh, when I was flying up here yesterday around 11 o'clock at night. Um, there was a couple people in the traffic pattern at Flagstaff, and I was like, "Oh, I had to work my way into the pattern to get in, to get onto the ground, like figure out where the line was, because there's no radios for uh, for multiplayer. So you uh, kind of yeah. yeah, you kind of have to actually go in and try to figure out, okay, where's the flow." <laughs> where, where am I going to do something that won't cut people off? Oh, the turbulence so coming good. over the ridge. I can feel it, or you know, it's impacting me already. Yeah, see, and that that's that's incredible because we have not seen that in a flight sim before. Even even with the existing flight sims on the market, we haven't seen that before. that they used to in Chicago way back in the day they used to do a thing where you'd get a little drop off uh, when you fly over the lake you'd get a little pressure drop come on Let's regain this aircraft here real quick flying turbulence still kind of trying to ease toward you real quick what's your altitude uh, 9100 Damn, I climbed a lot. Yeah. Uh, do you? Uh, did you? Uh, are you? Is your autopilot still on, or did you disengage the autopilot? Because you might be fighting. I disengaged fight the second just to uh, just to start changing my direction to kind of get behind you real quick. Okay. Because I've been, I was catching up to you a little bit. Yeah, I have the autopilot on nav mode going directly to Flagstaff, so I have the VOR tuned in and, and the autopilot is just fly, flying the needles. So wait, how do I do that? Um, so there's a nav mode on your, uh, on your autopilot, so you click autopilot and then you click nav, and then it will fly the needles into the VOR for you. So if I hit that... Oh, yeah, okay. Autopilot turned nav mode on. Mm -hmm. It's on. Oh, whoa, look at that. It changed the whole... Wow! So it put the overlay of magenta and, and uh, yellow on it. Now it's still reducing my altitude, but is it... Now will I... How do I set it to do an altitude hold? Uh, oh, you... okay, got it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I see, I see. I have to check the altitude button once I hit the altitude I want to be at. Yeah. I need I need to I need to do like an autopilot tutorial and just send you it. it this is fun. This is great. I'll just like ask you questions. It's like having a uh, a flight instructor, not having a flight instructor. Uh, why my my computer is not liking the loading and streaming at the same time. <laughs> you getting a little laggy? Yeah. Wild. Well, so well, if you blip out of existence, then, uh... Yeah, I was having... So I... What? There we go. No, I just... I, I, I had... I had to turn on... Okay, so that was fascinating. Here you are. See ya. So, you know this whole navigation by radio frequencies? Yeah. So I'm reading a book right now called The Splendid and the Vile. All right? It's by a guy named Eric Larson. And it's about um, basically the beginning of the war and Winston Churchill and him basically trying to, you know, push off the, the you know, bombing of London and all of that stuff. And back during those times they discovered that the Germans were using 
uh, radio frequencies to navigate to London over the English Channel. It was just far enough where it was over the horizon, so you couldn't, you know, fly by dead reckoning. You had to, you know, you had to have, you know, landmarks, or you, you know, and you had to use sunlight to navigate. Anyway, it looks like I'm heading the wrong direction. Which, uh, what button should I be pressing? Uh, uh, disengage nap mode, um, or, um, hit heading, hit heading, and then adjust the heading, which is the blue, uh, which should be your blue, um, the blue thing on top of your HSI, um, and just move, and then just move it to where, my direction. This is this is where I wish I could just go share cockpit and actually manipulate stuff for you and and show you where things are instead of talking it over with you. Oh, there it goes. It's coming back. There we are getting back up to 9,400 feet. There you are heading is now reset. Wild. I do feel like I'm drifting off of you real quick. I'm just going to come back over to your way. You sent in my view. Um, so anyway, in this book, though, it talks about how the Germans were getting over to London. And it was the very first time they were using radio frequencies that they were transmitting from the coast of France and, like, Norway and, you know, and from Germany to triangulate a direction. So basically what they do is they set up two towers to broadcast... One would broadcast beeps, the other would broadcast dashes. And when they would do that, they would, uh, whoa, oh my okay. autopilot's not letting go. Bucking. Uh, where, did, where, did, where did you go? I'm behind you. Okay, because your label you is off for me. Uh, I'm oh, there you. it is. I can still see you. But I'm getting fucked around. Something's, something's bucking me right now. I don't know what it is. Just disengage the autopilot. I did. There we go. Um, and so what would happen is you'd fly and be receiving these signals. Your, your system on the German aircraft would have this receiver that would receive the signals. And what you'd want them to do is turn into one tone. If you had too many blips, then you'd be going too far to the right. If you had too many, if it was too much dash, then you'd have, whoa, what is going on here? I am bucking all over the place. Is everything disconnected? No, it's just bucking. It's like it's like I'm hitting turbulence or something. Yeah, you probably are. Is that what disconnection feels like in this game? No. Crap load of turbulence. No, 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 no. I'm saying, I'm saying disconnected. Did you disconnect all your autopilots? Are you hand flying the airplane? I'm hand flying it, but it's okay. not flying away. It feels like uh, something is trying to compensate. How do I totally turn it off? Um, make sure you hit the autopilot switch. Well, I've got the button. Okay, well, there's, uh, so you have the yoke in front of you. There should be a, uh, there should be a red button on the top that says the autopilot, uh, disconnect switch. Did that work? Hold it, I gotta hold it. You, you'll probably hear her tone. Oh. Room rock, I see that. I don't see you anymore. And I've dropped down to 6,000 feet. Oh, Ooh, wow, you're low. Scary. It was scary. Just stalled out and dropped me out of the sky. Do you see Rimrock or no? No, I well, I, I don't have I don't have the POI labels turned on. You go. Can you see me at all? Uh, let me. No, I can't see you at all. Oh, now I see you. You're way low. Yeah. Um. Whoa, what is going on? Oh, I see you way up there. As soon as I pull up too much, the, the airplane starts to buck upwards. Doesn't make any sense why it's doing it. 
Try to disengage. Throttle. Just uh, trim for 80 knots and uh, and let the uh, let the aircraft climb itself. It's interesting. It's um, no, the yoke is literally pulling back, so it's something wrong with my joystick is acting up. Yeah, because I'm not pulling back on the yoke that far, but in the video game, it has it pulling back that hard. Very weird. Young did not like the autopilot feature. Yeah, that's the, that's C H yoke. Uh, if there's a um, there is a manual trim on the left hand side that decides that that does uh, adjust the physical trim. It's not an actual binding of a trim, though. No, I know the problem. The problem is though is that it. Uh, Oh, oh god. It's like, yeah, the yoke is acting weird right now. What is going on here? Yeah, it's like the, the yoke on the game is like jerking back and forth like crazy, and I'm not even touching the joystick. I go to neutral position, and it puts me into the dirt. Uh, are, you, are you sure you have? Oh, I died. Oh. <laughs> All right. So, what was the question? Uh, my question was: is, uh, I was going to ask if you are you sure you had everything completely disconnected from the autopilot? Well, I thought I did. I hit the disconnect button. I did the hold down of it. I didn't hear any beeps or blips or bops or anything like that. So. Okay. I'm not entirely sure. Um, spawn at Sedona. I'll meet you at Sedona. Alright. I'll get in the air and then you can pick me up. How long of a trip is it to Flagstaff? Uh, it's about another 10 15 minutes. Sweet, it's just up the way. That was disappointing. So maybe no autopilot with the CH flight sim yoke for the time being. Yeah. It was uh, it was really weird too. It was like I wouldn't touch the stick, and it would just start slamming backwards, putting the plane uh, driving the nose up into the sky. Yeah, the autopilot then, the autopilot is very interesting. So what? I, so there's there's a problem with it, and I think part of the problem is when they when they hit the disconnect when there's the autopilot disconnect. Um, it saves the exact last control state of where the autopilot wants to put the controls um, uh, in memory, and it doesn't actually clear that memory to defaults before you re-engage it. Because if you re-engage the autopilot after it does something, it wants to do exactly what it was doing before, as if it was left sense. off. Versus an actual autopilot system where it actually resets itself and says, oh, wait a second. I'm in a completely different situation. Uh, you know, it, it just starts from like as in, if, as as if you turned it on for the first time. So that's so that's something a Sobo needs to fix. And oh shoot, I hit retry. I need to not retry. I need to take off. Yeah, so yeah. You need to go back to main menu and then go to Arizona. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, oh, Sedona. Sedona, right? Yep, Sedona. Yeah. Sierra. Sedona. It is. Uh, Sierra what? Uh, Sierra Echo Zulu. Uh, did, did you um, uh, you've you've been to Sedona before, right? Driven through it. Okay, absolutely beautiful. Oh um, yeah. uh, did you? I I, I think I sh did did, uh, did I sh did I show you my uh, 90D? You've got a new camera? Yeah, got a 90D. Awesome. All right, what was it, Sierra? Echo Zulu. It, on, on the world map is actually the one with the star on it. Sierra Sierra Echo Zulu? No, Kilo Sierra Echo Zulu. Got it. Where did you go? Here, I'm gonna f I'm gonna fly over there and just land. 
Because it's going to take you oh, a little bit. Up. Okay. I'll be up shortly. I'm going to go right to the... I'm going to take off from runway three. Okay. We're still heading north, right? Yeah. Cool. But you'll wanna and, you'll uh, wanna take off and then circle the field so that way you get you get up above the mountains before you climb out north. Cool. <laughs> now I did actually fly through the canyon going up north and climbing, but you know that's not how you're supposed yeah. to do it. Yeah, it's fun. <laughs> so it, it's so like these the the bush pilot things, the bush things that they have in the game. The first one you do is a freaking riot. You climb right through a canyon, and it's it's just rip roaring fun. You know, you're making weaves, following this river, and all this. It's just just awesome. Yeah. They tell you in the simulator you got to keep it above a thousand feet, and you can like because the canyon's deep, you know. Yeah, the one thing I have to do when we when I get um uh, uh once I the first thing I'm going to do when I get uh when I get my license is I'm going to um I'm I'm going to uh, fly up to Sedona and have lunch. That would be a, that would be a riot. That's something that uh, you should definitely do. Well, and because because the airport Texas. restaurant, so the airport restaurant is really good at the Sedona at the Sedona airport. It's sort of like they a. Tend to be. It, and, and, but 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 for Sedona specifically, it's a destination restaurant. You know, it's for, for it's, pilots. Yeah. yeah, it's it's what we call a hundred dollar hamburger. Exactly. That's 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 it. <laughs> they, they've got a um, uh, they've got a place like that in Te well, they got a bunch of places like that in Texas. But we did a story for the Texas Bucket List um, about one of those little diners, and it was this all done in the '50s style, right there on the tarmac. And you walked into the front door of it from the tarmac. So, like, you'd get off your airplane, you'd walk right into the diner, you'd go and you know get your sandwich and all that stuff. Yeah, it was a ride. Great, great stuff. Oh no! See, see, general aviation flying. When you do that stuff, it is the best thing. <laughs> well, it's like it's like a, a poker run, you know, but much more expensive. Oh well, <laughs> no, it's well, we call it a hundred dollar hamburger because well, yeah. back back when back when airplane rentals, so so you you get it's like ten bucks for a hamburger, but ninety bucks for the rental. But you yeah. know now you can't. Now it's like 120, 130 bucks for a rental. Like, you and know, then you're not even including the fuel. Oh, well, oh yeah, it's because a lot of rentals, it's, it's a dry, it's a dry rental. It's not, yep. you, it's not a wet rental. Now, so. I, now I, uh, my dad is going to be trying to get to become a member of a club, and they do, and it is a wet rental. Awesome. Oh, oh man. Okay. All right, so uh, oh great, okay. you gotta deal with the default ATC, <laughs> lol. What's the uh? Yeah, it's fine. I'm just taking off. Right, and full throttle. Oh, I gotta start this thing. Oh no, it's started. It's gonna say. On the runway. Uh, you, you park and brake. Yeah, no, I got it. Here we go. All right. Do you see me yet? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I see you. Yeah, I, I see your I see your name tag. Um. So, so what heading should I take? Uh, just start start making circles. Go into pattern. So um. So just uh, just out of curiosity, from a from a oh a you know a flight simulator that has not you know been in the hobby for so many years, and you know if you're effectively relearning it, what was the tutorial experience for you? It was fantastic. No, it really was. The tutorial experience in this game was just top notch. I wish they would do an added tutorial, and maybe they will one day. That'll take you through instrumentation. 
you know, instrumentation flying. Hey, there you are. Um, yeah, I, 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 I think um, I, I think that's I think that's going to be more on the community to build. Like for someone like me to go over instruments, like the same way I'm doing for you. What a great course to learn is just do instrument flying. Um, shoot, you know that would be that'd be something I'd be looking up on YouTube all yeah. day long. Yeah, and, and I, I'm going to be I'm I'm going to probably be making those videos. Do it. All right. Where is the runway? There it is. And if you want to so, do, if you want to do uh, graphics for them, be my guest. <laughs> what's funny to me is that so Sedona, this is where you do your first flight. Mm hmm In the game. Yeah. Like when you do your first training flight. It's, yeah. It's at this it, but it, you know what's sad though is that they picked they picked the one area for to do all your to do all your uh, tutorial flying out of. Um, that actually doesn't have any photogrammetry for it. Hey. <laughs> Did you realize that? <laughs> it just looks, it looks amazing. But, but there's no, a, there's no actual photogrammetry for it. So it's all, technically it's all auto-generated buildings. It's not the actual, actual buildings. It's amazing. Um, uh, where, where, where are you at with your climb out? I am at... 5,400 feet, and I am uh, still climbing out. I am heading now. My heading is basically, what is it, 200? Okay. And I'm uh, making my gentle left. My uh, gentle left now back around to head north. You, uh, you've seen ha Hamilton, right? No, actually. Really? Things I have I've never seen. I, I'm sure you know. It, I've heard of it. I know the story. It's one of the, it's it's a story that I truly you know could get behind. I'm sure. But uh, no, I'm not seeing it. I, I I I thought you would at least have someone uh, that that would have um, you know uh, Disney Plus or something for you to go watch it. Yeah, no, not right now. I'm coming back over the airport right now. Oops. Don't stall. Or just remember the let let the aircraft fly itself. Yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, leaning out the motor helps get a lot of that power back that I've been missing. You forget how high we are up in Sedona already, like from the base. Yeah. Oh, what is our... What is the altitude supposed to be at? Uh, right now it's 3011. So, alright. Uh, just just proceed straight now. If you can uh, just proceed straight in that direction. Um, and just continue your climb out. One set and heading uh, thirty degrees. Yeah, one of the things I need I need to teach you too is uh is energy management and and doing um stuff up in uh what, what I was doing last night. <laughs> it, what was that? Oh, so I was uh I was so a, there's a whole bunch of in uh I um Idaho there's a lot of um U.S. Forestry Service um. Uh, airstrips for wh where they bring people in and out of for um, for whatever U.S. Forestry Service does. So, yeah. um, and I've just been going all through those in, in the canyons and um, and then making maneuvers in box canyons to uh, and, and just jumping right into those strips with the 172, um, which is really the, the the biggest airplane you can actually get into it. <laughs> You typically you typically pay, take uh, pay, take one of the Piper Cubs or whatnot into those, but I was just dumping all of them into one uh, with a 172. What a trip! Oh, I so I, I wish. Me right now? Yeah, I'm behind you? you. I can't see you at all. Yeah, I'm behind you. Uh, way high. I'm I'm at like ten thousand feet. All right, well, climb it up. Great canyon in front of me that'd be fun to drive into. 
Yeah, I've 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 driven through Sedona. Uh, I've eaten lunch there as well. Um, I want to go up there uh, when fall colors start to come and go up there with the camera and whatnot. Oh, it is a sweet spot with this mixture control. It really is. Like about sixty-two percent. Now I really start gaining that speed back during my climb. That is wild. Yeah. Yep, it's, you know, just just like the real airplane. Um, the, uh, so when do you think you'll come out here? Oh, I got to get out there at some point in time. I've got, uh, my uncle lives out there and a bunch of family up, a bit, up in Flagstaff, so got to get out there soon. Yeah, uh, uh, Robert uh, Van Winkle um, is uh, is coming out, and uh, we're gonna go grab a we're gonna go grab a bite when he comes out here. Cool. Shoot, I'm drifting off my heading. What uh, what should my heading be? Um, just fly through the canyon right now. Just follow One. the canyon left. Okay. The left canyon. Yeah, just just keep just go left. Uh, actually, can you climb out of that? Are you oh, are yeah. you above the walls? Okay, then go th yeah. then uh, then go straight the direction you were going. Uh, probably the zero two zero heading. Okay, yeah, you got it. Yeah, because what we'll do is we'll follow I seventeen directly to the airport. Cool. So, just uh, keep keep turning right. I got it. Zero two zero. Yeah. Do you want to loop around uh, fl uh, Flagstaff, and then and then come into the airport? Yeah. All right. Yeah, a, a, a coworker uh, of mine actually. We we did this. Uh, um, we did a blood run. Um, uh, to and back. Uh, he he took the he took the the um, the away leg and I t and then I took it coming back. That's got to be a lot of fun, you know, being able to fly like that and actually do it with some purpose. You're doing it as a training flight, or are you doing it like for real? Uh, no, it wasn't a train. He he wasn't an instructor. I um, but he was um, and I couldn't log the hours because I didn't have my uh, I I don't have my private. Um, but the uh, but we were uh, I I took I took him up on on uh, going with him because um, it was it was flying in Arizona and I haven't done flying in Arizona yet so I wanted to know the ins and outs of the Phoenix you know the Phoenix airspace you know just 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 stuff in general because sure. I would rather go and and even if I didn't know someone and I was and I had my license out here I still would have gone up uh, you know gone to a flight school and just spent a couple hours with an instructor to at least go over all the local stuff for Phoenix so because the last thing I, I would want is to get called by the FISDO and you know have to deal with you know a violation AKA a pilot yeah. deviation. I don't want to have to deal with that. So I would rather spend the money to go up with an instructor, you know, that will tell me all the local shit so I don't get myself in trouble. God, that's beautiful. Yeah. This just blows my freaking mind. Are we following this highway north? Yep, yep, we're, fo we're following the highway. Cool. Uh, what's your altitude? Uh, I'm sitting at 80, 88. Okay. That, that's not bad. Um, so, um, Flagstaff is at seven. So you're you're about at pattern altitude. Flagstaff's way up there. Well, yeah, the air. Quite a bit of climbing. Yeah, I I, I got you, I got you at my nine. Cool. Um. So, what, um, how much further do you think we are from Flagstaff? Uh, we, we're coming up to it. Um, 
I, I, I'd say about uh, 15 miles. Sweet spot. I mean, I see it ahead yeah, of. I I, I see. I, I I I have the airport in sight. Let's see what I can see. It's weird. I've got to zoom in to see. Is it to the right, to the left, or dead in front of us? Just dead in front of us. It, it it'll be right next to the road. Actually, I seventeen goes right next to the airport. What's amazing is that I couldn't I couldn't say that in an hour of flight sim. Like I couldn't use a visual reference point like a giant major highway uh, in an hour of flight sim because it just doesn't draw it. And that's what, that again. If this just compared to where this was, you know, I it's unbelievable. It's just unfreaking believable. You're you're at ten thousand, right? Yeah, I'm about ten thousand. Uh, yeah, you're nine thousand eight hundred. Oh, well, we're coming up on each other. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm gonna start oh. my. De I, I'm gonna start oh, my there descent. It is. Yeah. Yeah, I see it. I see the airport. I see it. I see it. Yeah. Uh, well, like, like I goes right across it, and then it looks like it's gonna be like a, uh, you know, Highway Three or something. Yeah. Like um. So winds are variable uh, at three. Um. So. Runway three. Yeah. So the winds are variable at three knots. So if we want to, we can take. We can just go. We can go straight in from the from the highway. So we'll just approach from the highway and make our and make a right hand turn, general right hand turn into the runway if you want to do that. Fly around Flagstaff, see what we see. Okay. And then the and then the mountain ahead of us, that's uh, Humphreys Peak, um, and uh, that's where the ski resort I go to uh, on a biweekly basis. Actually, what do you think the best? What's the best photogrammic town? to look at oh hmm i i haven't i haven't really um seattle is wonderful fly seattle let's land and fly seattle okay it's a we'll, place we'll, i've never actually even been we'll we'll go so we'll, like we'll go to uh we'll go to redmond uh we'll we'll spawn out redmond and then we'll uh we'll we'll go through the seattle area just driving it then are we calling are we calling air traffic uh, we, 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 we don't, I don't call it, I don't use the default, uh, air traffic control at all, built in. Okay. Um, and when, I, I'll get you introduced to, uh, what's called VATSIM, and that's with real air traffic controller, you know, that's, that's with people actually, you know, real person behind the mic, non, non AI. Well, uh, so it's just a way for people to practice? Yeah. Being a controller? Uh, it will be in pilots, and then, and then I... I'm actually one of the controllers on there, so I, I, um, I, I actually hand, uh, do some air traffic control. Time to it, do all this stuff. What? When do you have time to do all this? Oh, stuff? Oh, I do that while I'm doing other things, because it's just a simple, <laughs> a, it's just it's just a simple application. And when people call, I just, you know, minimize my other thing, go do air traffic control, and then, you know, when I don't have anyone I'm working, you know, I just go do my other stuff. Yeah, I'm usually so, doing programming while I'm air traffic controlling. So I wonder if you could actually run air traffic control for the country like that. How would that work? Would it work? You you couldn't. It's just there there's there's a there's there's an infrastructure problem. Because yeah. you're not if if planes will just overlap each other, you don't have to like actually clear the airspace or anything like that. Right. Uh, what do you mean? When you do the when you do your simulated version of it, you're not like making sure there aren't any planes on the runway or anything like that. Oh no, I'm doing that. I'm I'm doing all. I'm I'm you know we we set it up very realistic. Um, huh. But it's the th the thing is is that there's there um there are you can't do air traffic control remote in the same in, in, if what you were thinking of you know people working remote like they are now you couldn't do that um and that's just because of the infrastructure has uh just out of curiosity has anyone actually thought about doing a story about microsoft flight sim in oh not not at wink but i'm thinking about it i might pitch it okay just trying to figure out how the problem is page field like our city looks like crap in it if the city looked amazing it would be like all right you know but it doesn't. 
<laughs> it's real garbage. I mean, you found I the best part of it. I, you found the best part of it at FGCU. Yeah, that looks amazing. Well, that's so. because I actually have a really good computer that can that can do it. So, tell you what, I can I can send you the video of some of the good stuff for you to put in your story. Oh, let's let's send me the view you know, the good stuff and then I'll pitch it. Okay. Say, hey, this is our town. You know. And you ready to flare? Uh, where'd you go? Runway three. Oh, I, I thought I thought we were head. I I I was heading up by Flagstaff. I thought you were. Yeah, I thought we were going to Seattle. Oh, that's right. Okay. I'm on the ground. Let's taxi to. Taxi clear. Clear. General aviation ramp straight ahead of you. Yeah, just, I'm just pulling off over here. Gonna cause a ruckus so we're free to land. Like no wind. Yeah, I said it was a variable at three knots. Definitely ran, landed the wrong way though. <laughs> what do you mean landed the wrong way? Well, you're supposed to land into the wind. I landed with the wind. Well, it's it's it, like it, it's it's three knots. It's not like if it was six or seven knots, then you would kind of want to, you know, pay a little bit more attention. But you know, where are you put where are you landing? Are you landing on the very end, or are you gonna land like somewhere toward the middle? Um, let me take. I, I'm looking at the taxiways to see what uh, what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna probably do a short roll. Short roll. All yeah. Right. What? Then I will see you right there at it. Uh, how do I go to the outside view? Uh, it's so the ca the camera is going to be at the top. So move your mouse up to the top of the screen to to you get to the to the uh to the menu bar. Got it. Yep. And then you can yeah. and then you can select external. Cool. There there are key bindings you can set too. I yeah, I just I'm don't know them. All that nonsense. Yeah. I'm not dealing with any of that. All right. Oh, that is cool too. So when you shut off all of the power to your airplane and you try to lift up your flaps or do anything, it just doesn't do it. I left my flaps down, all sloppy, and then um, oh, here you come. See it? Yeah, if you watch the stream, you'll you can see you can see my perspective. You see me sitting over here, like yeah. taking up the taxiway. <laughs> here you go. So what are your call letters? Oh, I don't. I don't have them set. I don't. I didn't set mine either. I'm trying to find a good one to get the. What was that plane that uh, William Cooper jumped out of? I I don't know. <laughs> get those call letters. Oh, you got a bus coming in at you. Oh damn. I I, I have the I have the airport traffic turned off. Oh okay yeah this bus is like coming right at you. All right, that's that's officially freaking awesome. All right, Seattle. To Seattle. All right. Uh, uh you you want okay. so and back to main menu. Menu. What airport? Uh, it's gonna be Redmond. All right, hold. Well, when you get the numbers, let me know. Uh, it's you're Kilo gonna, R a Romeo Mike me. Delta. Kilo Romeo Mike Delta. Oh, a, a, a notepad really helps out, by the way. I'm sure. So always keep a notepad next to your computer. <laughs> I'm not kidding about that.
You know, there's a reason why we have notepads in, in our in, in our actual cockpits. You know, keep a pad of paper. Sorry, yeah, sorry, it's, it's Renton, not Redmond. Um, it's Kilo Romeo November Tango. Okay. Um, Renton. Yep. Uh, it's right. uh, and I'm setting what it. What space are you going to? Uh, I'm ramp thirty-three. Go, uh, go thirty-six. Thirty-three. So uh, that on? that's on the that's on the north side. So Renton is where they manufacture the seven thirty-seven out of. All right, I am going from ramp 36 to this departure. Lie. Hopefully we'll have some weather. It was fun yesterday. I was in the middle of flying. I flew from Page out to um, Buckingham. Yeah. And then went back, you know, I did a touch and go at Buckingham and then left. And uh, in the middle of my flight back, I turned on the live weather and it was like just amazing the difference in terms of how it made everything look but the other problem was it was, it was thundering outside of my house at the time I did this but <laughs> popped into a middle of a thunderstorm and I was like holy shit <laughs> <laughs> like, so yeah, I just you know I landed it got it back to Page Field in one piece but it was like holy shit <laughs> yeah Hey, man, hold on a second. I'm going to call you right back, okay? All right.
Hello. Hello. Hey. So my computer crashed. Ow. <laughs> I'm gonna load it up. Give me a sec. Well, you know how long it takes to load this thing. It's not a second. But... Yeah, it's more like ten minutes. But yeah. So. So yeah, we'll um. Um, we'll start in Redmond, and then it would be great to fly around the needle. Yeah. It'd be fun. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm going to end this.